Hey everybody and welcome to Artifact, a new card game released by a small indie developer called Valve. Valve is a newcomer in the games industry and was founded by a young entrepreneur called Gabe Newell. This is Valve's first game, as far as I can remember, but it set the bar high for any future endeavours they may undertake. That is, if they ever release another game ever again. Let's take a look at it, shall we? Jokes aside, Valve has finally released a new game. Sorry, I mean... GAME. And if you've watched more than one of my videos, then you'll already know that I hate it. I mean, I hate every game I cover on this channel to some extent. This is no exception. So if you're some kind of artifact fanboy, you might as well just press the dislike button and leave. Because this is gonna be a very heavily biased ass blast in Valve's general direction. Valve, I hope you're prepared because it's time someone exposed you for who you truly are. So, shall we play some artifact? Yes, let's. Because I quite like Dota 2. Since giving up Team Fortress 2, it's filled the life-wasting portion of my day quite nicely. So when Valve announced a Dota card game, I thought, this is going to be pay-to-win rubbish. But I'm still going to buy it, because it's Dota. Congratulations, Valve. I fell into your trap. I hope you spend my money wisely. I can just imagine the Scrooge McDuck style money pit at Valve HQ. My 15 pounds contributed to that. And he didn't even say thanks. When the game starts, you have to open a card pack to get your heroes. Let's see who I've got. We've got Farvan the Dreamer, but don't know who he is. Keith the Bold, some kind of generic ogre looking guy. We got Sven. Oh, oh, Sven! I, I know that one! I recognize him from Dota 2! Then you're thrown straight into the tutorial so you can learn the mechanics of the game in an easy and safe environment. I lost. Luckily on my second try, I did a bit better. The game itself, people have been saying it's really complicated and has a massive difficulty curve or something. Maybe because Dota's really hard to get into and they're just basing it off that, but it's really not that bad. It's pretty much just putting cards on other cards and then pressing the end turn button. Everything else the game pretty much does for you. Does it have depth? Yeah, sure. I mean, everything has depth to an extent. Even Overwatch, as hard to believe as it may be. I'm sure the strategy behind the game can get extremely complex, but as far as low level play goes, you could probably complete and maybe even win your first game without even knowing what's going on. So don't let that particular design point put you off. But don't worry, we'll get to what should put you off soon enough. You know, so far I have to say I'm surprised, everything seems to be working reasonably well. Usually when Valve releases something, it just doesn't work, like the, the game servers are down or... Uh, sure, the bot names are kind of unimaginative, but it's not really game-breaking. No, I'd have to say it's relatively bug-free, oh wait, no it isn't. People aren't getting their cards. You know, if I had to name a worse bug, I don't think I could do it. Well, maybe if it deleted your operating system or something. Just imagine, you buy the game and then you don't get the game. But come on, you have to be forgiving. It is Valve's first game after all. They don't have that much experience with shipping games and besides, they don't have the funds necessary for proper quality control. They are just a small indie studio, you can't expect too much from them. But surely enough, their funding problem will soon be solved thanks to one word. Monetization. Artifact is a card game, which means you need cards to play. And how do you get cards? You have to buy them. You get given some cards at the beginning, which is fine for low levels, but as you get better, you're gonna find you're losing that competitive edge. Your opponents all have better cards than you, and you're still using the cards you got at the beginning, and you need better cards, so how do you get better cards? You have to give some money to Valve. I don't know about you, but I really love paying money to enable me to pay more money. I just love the feeling that I'm contributing to a big pile of cash. 
Of course, people have tried to justify this behavior. Oh, when you pay that $20, you're actually paying for $20 worth of packs. So if you want more packs, it's you have to buy them. Then there's my favorites. Oh, card games have been doing this for years. This is nothing new. You have to pay, pay. Yeah, card games have been doing this for ages, but it doesn't mean it's right. You can't justify your actions based on, oh, someone else did it, so it's okay. You could do anything by that mantra. I could just mug someone and be like, oh, there's loads of muggers out there so it's okay it doesn't stop me being a scumbag i'd still be stealing someone's money which doesn't actually make me that much different than a certain company we know artifact is flawed in its very concept and by that i mean because it's a collectible card game take a game like dota all the heroes are available from the very start they're all good and they're all balanced just about Good game design. Now if we look at card games where not all the cards are available from the start, you want people to buy more cards and for that you need an incentive, right? And so it's by nature that some cards are just better than others. It's purposely unbalanced to make you pay more. What actually happened to Valve? They used to be all about making groundbreaking games, but now they're all about making money. They're already making billions from Steam, how much more money do they need? It's just greed at this point. They've got the resources to do pretty much anything they want, and they use it to make more money. You know, HLVR better be the most incredible game ever made, ever. I mean, it would have to be to justify the thousand dollar price point of a virtual reality headset. Enough about microtransactions though, because Valve actually released some accompanying media to help promote the game's release, and also help convince us that they are still human. You know, this could be interesting, maybe it'll help us clear up the whole Howl's Moving Castle vibe we've got going on here. Prelude. It's pretty much an explanation about what's actually happening. It's all something about shaping the future on whatnot, and they do it all by playing cards. Something the characters are quick to make fun of. You see, if we make the characters make fun of it, it'll cover up the fact that we've actually seriously used that as the plot. Come on, Valve, you're better than this. Billion dollar writers, what are you doing? The comic moves on. And with the extreme backlash of Artifact, it appears Valve has moved their attention to a new demographic. Furries. Here we are introduced to some kind of goat who totally isn't Alora the Fawn from Reignited Trilogy, and definitely totally isn't Persephone from Dead Astronauts, and she introduces us to the Artifact, which is some kind of timey-wimey thing, but no one cares because they're all too infatuated by the goat. You know, I was wondering how effective this furry marketing strategy actually was, so I decided to try it out on a certified yiffer. Valve heard your concerns and added a cute yiff to Artifact. How can you say no to it now? Not even cute. Well, there goes Artifact's only chance. If the fur is say no, what hope does it truly have? Well, time to get it refunded myself. Oh. I guess I did actually put a fair amount of time into Artifact, and I still have a few more hours to give. What do I think of it? I think it's a decent game, but if it wasn't a Valve game, I doubt it would get that much attention. But it is a Valve game, so of course we can expect million dollar tournaments to come in the near future. I mean, that's just how esports works. Gotta pay people to play your game. Is it good value for money? Depends how you look at it. Compared to a game like Dota or TF2, hell no, you can get thousands of hours out of those games for free. Compare it to a game like Sonic Forces, however, where you pay $45 for about two hours of gameplay, then it becomes a bit more reasonable. Compared to something like that, I think $20 is a decent price point, considering the amount of hours you can get out of it for that much. But come on Valve, you can do better. You literally print money. It doesn't need to be this way. Anyhow, Artifact is... Yeah, and I'll see you in about 12 months. This meme will never die because we are in the beam. We are in the beam. We are in the beam.